I Zahara Bidi. I Elisha. We, we are, are software, software engineers. engineers. What we find fascinating about the rise of AI and, and ML. So what fascinates you about AI and machine learning? I think now it's for the, it's that time to learn and improve it because out of the blue it stopped because it sensed something, it stopped and the other, the other vehicle crashed. Mm -hmm. But self-driving cars, I think, obviously I think in Uganda, with our infrastructure, they may not be that possible, but in the outside countries, it's a good idea in that you can you can have fun in your cars as you're traveling, where you're not worried about anything. Personally, I find the ability of machine learning and AI in the field of data analysis helps to automate uh, real-time data processing. Mm -hmm. And to me, if I look at the concept of neuro, neural network and deep learning, it enables ma machines to recognize patterns. These patterns could be in form of the images and makes prediction. So particular to me, I find this so intriguing. And when I look at how AI is advancing, I feel the next generation would be relieved from most tasks that are done manually, be done by the machines. Because the, the, the kind of predictions, the, the, the level of accuracy, to me, I find it so high, when you, especially if you're dealing with the machine learning model. The impact of AI, in, in, the, in these fields like business, finance, healthcare, they help a lot if, if you look at the, the, the health sector into the diagnostic. So analyzing medical images, if you look at a situation where images are being scanned from the x-rays, uh, those radiographical images that are being uh, generated, the potential of the accuracy of analyzing those images help us to understand the diseases and provide potential treatment if probably this is a fracture that we could not see with our naked eye. So that's why I find AI and machine learning to be more intriguing, especially when dealing with the pattern recognition part of it, and help to, help to understand how those fractures from those images, those patterns, how they, they can even help in the dead cells, how we can analyze them. To me, I find that something very intriguing. When we also push our mind into the field of finance, how do we see the aspects of this AI algorithm working out? So in business, most business these days, because the talk of AI in developed countries has been hype because of its relevance. Now, when you look at how it is improving customer experience, even a customer goes into the shop, AI can predict the pattern of how this customer has been shopping throughout the period of time and makes even recommendations for the kind of products the customer has been buying. So that's how I find AI. Uh, it also helps even in targeting. Some of these ads can run based on your consumer behavior onto the internet. That's why me, I see AI as a big transformation in these industries like finance, healthcare, because of its popularity. And when you come back to Africa, because some of these discussions that we are pulling in, they are just significant in solving the African problems that we have. So when we look at different industries that we have in Africa, probably in the transportation sector, could you please chip in and look at how Google Map is transforming? Yeah, Google Map has really done a lot in the sense that security has increased, dodging, traffic jam, in the sense that you're on this road, you can see the different alternative routes that you have, which route has less jam, which has more jam. So that's now, that's a bit in time, and that's time saving. So indeed, for people who are utilizing Google Maps, are really benefiting from this. And for instance, take a a point in, if you look at a given project like Safe Border, I think it was the first company partner with Google Maps and you see how people are really using Safe Border. You make your order, now people can even use Safe Border for delivery without any securities. So you see, this is a good venture. And this is all AI. Because, okay, they use satellites, but at the end of the day, such predictions of 
which route has more jam. That's 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 all AI. And on top of that, we can't leave digital marketing. So let it's... me also keep in. Can you also probably discuss more on self-driving cars? Because we've seen a lot with Google self-driving cars. Yeah, yeah. This really uses more of AI. For instance, of late I was on Twitter and I was seeing how a Tesla Model 3 caused the next day. Mm. And you see, it's a self-driving car, but I think now it's for the, it's that time to learn and improve it because out of the blue it stopped because it sensed something, it stopped and the other vehicle crashed. Mm. But self-driving cars, I think, obviously, I think in Uganda, with our infrastructure, they may not be that possible, but in the outside countries, it's a good idea in that you can you can have fun in your cars as you're traveling, and you're not worried about anything. Because we all know this, most of the accidents come along with, okay, like, when you're, you're doing something else and you're driving, maybe you're picking a call mm. or some something that's attention taking has passed by. So mindset. Yeah, the mindset. So it's a, with the self-driving car, all that is sorted. You have your peace, you do your stuff with ease without having to worry about the surroundings. However, I think a lot has to be done I mean, my judgments. Yeah, I, 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 I see the impact of uh, self-driving cars. But you know, in Africa, we still don't have self-driving cars because of our road. The our kind of infrastructure <laughs> is really bad. Yeah. We have potholes everywhere. In, and the roads are not good. But you see, with those developed countries uh, like Europe, uh, America, their roads are good. Mm. I think also in uh, in Dubai, the roads are good the, the, and, and they have the money. That's mm. why they have this serving, serving driving cars. Now, it is improving transportation. And the fact that it is improving transport, transportation, that means it reduces on the rate of what? Accident. That's why to me, all this is possible because of AI and machine learning. Because mm. it learns the pattern of how those maps, the navigations, and sometimes represent those images in, in, in three-dimensional. Like if you look at what Google really launched with their Google map, so you'll be able to look at it in three-dimensional aspect. So which is much better, than the, much better than the 2D. Yeah. So before also we move further, maybe we can also look at it with this conversation uh, chatbots that are there. So the chatbots that have come up, we have uh, BAD and, and, GPT. and ChatGPT. What's, what's your take on, well, what do you think about AI and machine learning in this chatbot? One, I think it's a great initiative, more especially for ChatGPT because it's able to keep your history. So it implies with ChatGPT, of recent hours, seeing a prompt on how you can train your your chat. Okay, you talked about uh, keeping uh, history. history. I've, I've used BAD and I've also used uh, ChatGPT. But tends not to store. It, yeah. It's just real time it, 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 reply. It's real time reply. Yeah. But gives you the option to either export it to your mail or save it to your Google Doc. Yeah. But it, if you don't save it, then you definitely have to come back. But but why I what I like about ChatGPT is that it keeps that history. So that next time, if you yeah, you're looking for that particular item, you go back to it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you see now. I think ChatGPT 100% beats Google, the Google bad mm. reason is for people who are using ChatGPT 4 mm. or ChatGPT Plus, because mm. it has all those functionalities. Mm. It can generate for you tables. It can, mm. it can give you an option to copy and like ChatGPT 3, which most of us are using because mm. we're not willing to pay. Okay. But they said what I could tell people is it's high time they invested in ChatGPT. Mm. And for, for now, most when you update chat GPT plus mm. most of the plugins are still for free. So it because for instance there's this there's this web there's this AI You're welcome. We have mm. a, another guest coming in. Please take this in. Uh, we have this mid journey. I don't know if you've heard about mid journey. It's I like your bag. Yes. Yeah, we have the mid journey. This mid journey really does a lot in generating images. Mm. For recent, some I was seeing some guys post on Twitter on how mm. he told you to generate the different cities in the country, mm. all the 
how people in those cities look like and just generating images that looked far better than what we could what I could assume. So it's a it's high time people thought about investing in GPT. More especially because you can literally come up come up with your own financial consultant. Mm. All, all, all we have to learn are the prompts. If you give the right prompts, trust me, GPT is the best tool to use. But use the wrong prompts still it's the worst tool to use. Oh, okay, let, let's push this into the aspects of computer programming. You run into an error and probably you figuring out to solve the error. Mm. In, in the past, the traditional way was to go to Stack, Stack Overflow, Overflow and then and then GitHub and then try to look for how people have implemented it. But these days I find it much easier if you look at these chatbots, these conversational AI tools like this chatbot. Like once you copy the code there and you type that fix this error mm. and, and he actually fix the error and even exp- actually suggest to you and explain to you how you could go about it. Mm. So I think uh, the innovation is okay. Uh, for our viewers, well, we're just talking about AI and machine learning, which uh, which have been trending. It's a trending topic and ChatGPT is one of them. It's an AI driven conversational tool that has been trending for in the US now. It is in Africa. For us, we are discussing it particularly for our Africans who may not know much more about technology. So our discussions is just to enlighten them and it's a learning process. So with me, I have a team. Uh, we have the names that we use on internet. It's called Elisha, I'm here, she's Zahara. Okay, so these are the people that we'll be meeting. We will be having more people on board to join us in this discussion just to help improve on our understanding of how technology can the transform lives. the internet, can better our lives. So that, that's that's the most important thing. So right now, we'll be, we 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 discuss few about self driving cars, okay? But you know, in Africa, we don't have maybe self driving cars. But uh, Alicia pointed out clearly that uh, these self driving cars they have some. They are actually when we look at the Google Maps, which are within them, they help in route planning. If you want to travel, suggest for you that this road is having traffic there's no traffic on this road and then also reduces on on accident because you don't sleep because the biggest problem that uh, many why many drivers get accident is because of uh, sleep sleep yeah sleep drunk. and then drunk but all that is taken care of so right now we were also able to look at how uh, ai and machine learning has been used in industries we looked at health and then we also looked at business and how we were able to use deep learning, machine learning in image processing. That's why we find some of this content worth discussing. So right now, we're probably going to look at one of the most important things, which is quite easier for us to understand. For the viewers who don't know, is what could be the key benefits of AI? What, what, what do you feel about the impact of AI and machine learning? In our society and in our economy, pick any field and probably discuss more. Okay, let's let's narrow it down like this. We could look at it in terms of productivity, or we can look at it in terms of uh, efficiency in different industry or customer care. Remember, let me try to give you something. If you go to a supermarket and and you're buying a product. So as, as, as a business person, I may not know the trends, the patterns, how people, what people buy, in, because I have the items in stock. But if I have an AI driven tool, it will take the stock and I will know that this stock is the one that is highly consumed by my customers. Mm-hmm. So in that way, even when I'm making a request for the supplies, I would know what really my customers buy more from the supermarket. Or alternatively, you could look at it in terms of job skilling. How, how, how does AI impact our skill? Okay, because we could, it's, it's a learning platform. So all this, oh, okay, maybe in terms of um, uh, we could also try to associate it with some of the opportunities that comes in. Of course, we know people will be laid off in terms of jobs but also 
there is also these aspects of data science. I don't know if we could pick and discuss more on data science. Because data science seems to be a field that it's actually it's a growing demand for all businesses. They are picking up interest into how to analyze data. Okay? And how AI is impacting this, it, it gives that insight, a data-driven insight, decision making, that people can use to generate idea. Like if I want to fire someone from my uh, maybe someone is not performing, I based on the what? They call it decision mm -hmm. systems. Because I would base on those records, like the sign-in system and then the sign-out. So I can track that. In terms of productivity, let's look at it uh, in this aspect of... Uh, you, we, we work in remotely, okay? Let's talk about remote working. Because all these are also driven by AI. And then uh, you look at the aspect where you're collaborating on a document and you're working on it from this aspect of... Uh, uh, all of you are editing the same document on a, a google doc so you would see each person's contribution and how much someone is contributing so mm -hmm. let's look at the benefits of ai probably from the remote working perspective yeah i think we will just choose one area which will be digital marketing okay uh i think right now google has the ability to help you advertise your product on google in your specific area in your locality your target market but i think that's not enough we the people who have products should venture in this and use AI. Because of recent, you're going to realize that you can use AI to generate for you your articles, your blogs. Mm. We have TenWeb, mm. which is a platform that helps you generate your website. So it's, it's erasing all this hassle of having to know a lot of code. Mm. All you have to do, provide your business, your company name, provide like four main services you provide, then you provide a description to generate for you a website that has almost everything. Now you always just come. Even you choose the themes, what color do you want it to be? Mm. You choose the themes, you choose everything. So what you do is just, you do a little editing. And this, I think, it's a threat for us who are really venturing in code, or okay, coding as our practice. So say, mm. you've been coding for a website maybe for 300K. Mm. Now this guy, all he does do, he goes to 10 web, mm. he pays his, is ten dollars per month. He already has hosting services embedded there. Mm. They gain for him a website, mm. and if he modifies, can even find he can host ten websites on the same. You know, so they have cut off hosting and server costs. Mm. They have cut off development costs. They have cut off almost everything. So it's a AI. It's something that we sh even us who really are techno, we are venturing technology. Mm. It's high time we. We started utilizing the AI tools. At least you have the physical skill, maybe for job seeking, mm -hmm. but you have also the AI to aid you in your side hustles. Because mm -hmm. let's say, I think if you're checking other development can developed countries, okay, in Uganda, I don't know about independent blogs that are there or websites, but mm -hmm. there, government we find a guy, he's maybe an Uber driver, mm -hmm. but he owns a website, he owns. Okay, passive income is a lot there. Mm. And I think AI has come to provide us alternative ways on how we can make or generate passive income. That's true. Yeah, that's mine is really how to utilize digital marketing. Let's sell what we have mm. and we earn more money than waiting for the job. Yeah, to me, let's probably discuss it. There are quite so many benefits of AI, ranging from productivity. You become very efficient at your workplace. Yeah. because of this AI tools. Mm -hmm. uh, in a situation where you need to sit down and probably take 30 minutes to draft a letter, maybe a contract letter, you would spend much less time to write a letter. Actually, it probably takes you 0 0.5 seconds to generate a letter. And you do some bit of editing and then personalize it to what you feel uh, is relevant to you. And then one other thing that I find it more interesting let's look at it in terms of our dressing code okay most of the tech guys do not mind about how they dress but if you're interested into try to match in your fashion, fashion, yeah. fashion and you you could use ai this this ai apps are there mm -hmm. they help you to pick up a design and a tired put on and probably because you may to the ladies actually they spend a lot of time um in their wardrobe trying to pick what they should put on yeah so 
I, I find that is also another benefit of, you see, using AI. Because I could go do online shopping. I don't know in how Jumia is perfect. But I think Jumia is kind of like a, a web-based application where you order for a product. I, mean, I don't know if, they, if it is an AI-driven app. Because yeah. it has. I'm not sure because <laughs> you see, it, I don't see Maybe recommendation. Just it. Yeah, because most apps in Uganda, most of the apps in Uganda, they are just a static apps that does what the routine processing mm -hmm. on it, ordering, and then I, I don't think they are because if 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 really they they were AI, they would even recommend which particular product am I searching for? Yeah. Okay. Before we continue, then I want her to discuss about the fashion uh, issue where I recommend it for your fashion. Would you find it important? Yeah, I would find it very important because at times uh, you really want to put on something. You know, at times you put on something that is out of trend. Yeah, that's And true. majority of people want to keep themselves on trend. Mm. And when AI is put into those businesses, especially the fashion businesses, a person will be able to identify what's on trend, what matches this and this, uh, what are the training store, like stores, the stores where we buy clothes. Uh, mm. I feel like it will be very, very easy for people to fashion and design themselves. You know, like these celebrities, they yeah. have fashion design as a side, who they pay a lot of so money. <laughs> I know, right? So if the eyes in, it's very like those people will no longer be needed yeah you, you will can. even save your income maybe like you save your income you have that website that is having ai incorporated in it it's where you'll always search for your new fashions and all that instead of having a fashion star fashion star will always come in to design what you've just seen mm. yes i feel like it will be a very very good yeah thing in fashion but in this case then where will our fashion stars go what, what that's do? what I, I, I have usually talked about. They should always look at, you know, we have to change the change. So they will always also find a way of survival. Of survival. That is, uh, they could maybe make their own websites that are AI driven. So that instead of sitting down and working, fashion, like designing one person, they design a variety. They have their own website with AI incorporated in, and mm. uh, it, they make their own businesses that can look at a wider market instead of sitting at one or two people especially those top top people celebrities and all those people who are yeah. more into fashion uh, i think they would come up with websites obviously they train the models depending on their own mind how they feel like they've been doing their fashion recommendations yeah. and then they make it pay but if you want to sell some silly designs you first pay some money yeah and, you... and that's how they could mm. and I, I could also look at another benefit of ai um in uh, in the health sector you know the health sector usually employs a lot of people and those people are given a lot of money for example when i go to the hospital i will need to go for testing but if ai is highly and highly incorporated in those health uh, sectors it will be very hard to employ a lot of people and the government will find it easy to finance the health sector whereby where you could go and uh, test for blood, maybe malaria and all that, the diseases could be tested using AI models. Mm. So that could reduce on the finances that are being put into the health sector. And also, um, it could also help, you know, at times doctors are not perfect, but uh, an AI model is also not perfect, but at least it can be better than a doctor. But on that point of testing malaria, I don't know. I remember there's some time, there's some group of students are working on a project to test for malaria without taking yes. the blood sample. So honestly, people are really trying to be innovative in this area. We but, but, taking a blood sample? Yeah, I remember. It's they're here. From Mark, actually. Yeah, they're from here, I'm actually, yeah. I think Rutana is part of them. Yeah, even uh, Kathy, they had to pass by the Huawei. It was a Huawei competition. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, guys are really trying to venture in the health sector, see how they, how they can make it more. How, how it can utilize technology. Yeah. And I think this is really a good idea. But however, I feel like something is lacking, more especially in our setup, in our Ugandan setup. Because you're going to find every time you come up with innovation, you have to seek from abroad. 
like finances. Yeah, you have every time whether it's good for the community or yet, not. Yet we the people in can can uh, develop the AI models and instead of going in for uh, donations, we can change uh, we can change the investment parts of it, like the donations we get in from those countries and uh, we use our own knowledge mm. to fund our own souls. Yeah, so, yeah. I think it would be really so important. So real AI is over. Let's look at the impact of ChatGPT on the education system. Uh, well, a uh, majority of the teachers, I even heard that in Kenya it was uh, banned. Yeah. banned uh, but I feel like it's not a good one. That's, I think it's to, not a good yeah, it might think it was a mistake. It was a mistake? Was it? Banned, were they yeah. fake news? Actually? No, it was. I think it's true. I remember it's like Ruto talked about it. We shall try to dig in and see more. But AI has an impact on education. Education a very, very big impact because uh, they really need to know how we should change the technology because yeah. we shall not lag behind as the world is evolving. So I feel like yeah. they should even allow us to subscribe for Bigger. premium packages and all that. Yeah, Mr. G, if we're looking at AI in, 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 in uh, education, education we, we want your view as a lecturer. What do you have to say about this? Do you think your students you should utilize chat GPT to the optimum or they should stay away from it? Let me come back to this frame again uh, on the aspect of AI in education. Yeah. Uh, I think if I go back to our traditional ways, mm. I find it that it makes the kids to become more um, research driven, especially when it comes to AI in education. You guys, uh, in the past, how we used to do some of this coding, I think 10 years ago, I, I always used to write some of this code. Probably would be one of the other things to understand. But these days, even if a lecturer does not give you a good concept, you know I can just run to BAD or I can go to chat GPT. Actually, it, it reduces even some of the assignments. Let's, let's, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest, okay? I, 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 I know why you, you, you people are now uh, laughing. Because you see, I give you an assignment, but I know that 100% someone has tried it. And once the it's already, the solution is somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you find whenever I give you the assignment, you just copy that keyword, paste it anywhere, it gets you exactly. But the problem, now let me tell you. You see, that assignment, it's not about copying and pasting. Because when when you copy and paste, I've, I've seen people who use chat GPT and they, 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 they get zero. Okay? <laughs> because the lecturer can detect. Like me, I can detect. Yeah. And I know that this person copied the code mm. and pasted it without adding in the effort. You mm. see, when, when what personally what I need is that what changes have you added to the code? What value have you added to the code that you have copied and pasted? Again. That's why I have been marking most of your assignments. Mm. I find people copy co codes from chat GPT, paste it. Copy code from back, paste it. Now, I also copy that code, I take it back there. You see? Mm. Yes, and I find it's the same thing. Someone has not even changed. Okay? But, but what I, I like about those AI but models, it's because people he can have been trained their models. You know, mm. I could train my chat. Eh? Mm. Even if you give me my code, it uses low Uganda names. Mm. It uses, because you could tell it, I want you to generate for me code at yeah. beginner level. Mm. I want you to generate code. In, in, in a developing country, something mm. okay, like you really tell it everything, everything. in that you the can generate yeah, the, yeah. all of this. The prompting, trust me, at one point, look, I'm not saying you won't be able to detect this, mm. but for a, someone, if he trains their chat very well, specifically mm. for Python, mm. the feed because at the end of the day, the more data you give it, the better it becomes. Yeah, mm. that's so right. if, I, if I've been following maybe your lectures, because mm. I remember there's some guy I was seeing on Twitter. He was like, how to use ChatGPT mm. to generate for you a better blog. Mm. He says, he's, he's told, he's like, you see, he went to his blog, he's like, this is my blog. He copied mm. it and he input it. Then he told it, uh, in what human voice, in what tone was this blog written? Mm. It replies like, it's rational, it's emotional, it's motivational, it's what. Mm. This guy is like, in the same human tone and mm. voice, generate for me a blog about this. Mm generated a, a blog that was honestly it had human language like you couldn't instead that it's you, a, bo a botic kind of yeah, a you, at no time because mm. 
because remember when you ask it in what human voice told you it was rude was this was this mm. and you did so it will fall on your your own patterns you as a person because at the end of the day for right blogs mm. your human voice will be different from mine my punctuation maybe for my punctuate after every like six words i make sure my things are short use are you write long sentences it, it will adjust according to my writing skills yeah but, but what what i would advise students to do personally to to maybe convince us that you've done some level of input mm. in let's say in any assignment that you're given i do I, I would prefer you to get the code but make some changes to it mm. okay you do not if just do not replicate it directly just copy because that's a bad image. You're trying to show me that you're all this lazy. I can't change anything. Yeah, yeah. Because so. each and every time I try to uh, look at the codes that students have sent, I see now this one. Okay, you copy this now. Should I give you marks? No, I just move <laughs> to the next person. Mm. So I do not waste a lot of my time. But a situation where you you pick the code. Even trying to change the words which are there, I said, okay, probably this this person now even understand. Yeah, because you when you don't point. understand it, you fear change. You say, mm, but if I change, I <laughs> love it. Know, right? You get it. Yeah. So you end up throwing in the cuts the way they are. Mm. So that's that's one thing that uh, in the field of education, students should really think about that aspect. Mm. Yeah, it is good to reuse codes. We all we know this is a programmer yeah. trend in this era. But in the past, people would write what? Would add code. You write your codes from scratch. But these days, it's not. It's, it's a waste of time. Because whatever idea that you want to implement, someone maybe has already implemented it. Okay? Mm. That's why these days, I find even lecturing much easier. I go to write my code. I know at the back of my mind, I don't know. I have not stored any of my code here. But I know the flow of my code. Then I just look at Copilot as my driving yeah, 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 yeah. Thing. Yeah. i don't actually focus on what on even having the code here uh, my mind is just keep to what copilot suggests i tap it but if i feel it's going to generate a problem i delete it and i change yeah. to what i feel is what yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that's why in most cases i i personally find lecturing has become easier using this copilot it's an ai driven thing because copilot is a product of microsoft you know, in the Microsoft Dev Talk, they, 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 they discuss more about what Copilot can do. Or mm. the automate suggestions. So, so that you can probably see what matches with what you're doing. Mm. And two... Is it only uh, strict to code and particular languages? You, you see, Copilot has been there before. But uh, they have just made it easier. It works with almost all those programming languages. Mm. You know, VS Code is a Microsoft uh yeah, yeah, yeah. application mm -hmm. so the beauty is that the developers have put in a lot of what effort to make sure that you can customize uh the vs code and then with those extensions so that you can run uh any installations that you need in any language and one thing if we get back to ai in these programming languages in the past uh zara can be a testimony she said that one of our best uh, language was uh, Java because the lecturer uh, was good. Was good. She, yeah. It was the first language she learned. It was the first <laughs> language she learned. <laughs> but, but I just want to tell you that, in fact, all programming languages are easy. Like to me, I can teach any programming languages, even if I don't have a background in, in, in any of those languages. As long as I understand the syntax. Mm. You see, there's some website, W3 School. Yeah. They made it simpler to explain all those programming languages. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now, the only thing is it is not advanced. Okay? Yes. It's just too basic to understand. But now to intrigue your mind to understand some of the advanced uh, programming concepts, that is when now you think about the chat GPT and then the bad. Then you can ask it to write for you the similar code, maybe if you're dealing with matplotlib, and say, okay, please, could you 
write for me an advanced code of Matplotlib. It will generate for you. You see, that's why most of you are going to find it much difficult in this uh, in this aspect of our Python for data science because our data set. I'm trying to avoid a situation where you go to Cargo, you go to Gaff.org to get a data set from there. Probably they've worked out the solutions for you. But I want a situation where we have an original data set. So there's no way. The only thing which will work is the idea that is implemented. You would see whether it can also be implemented on your same code. That's why me personally, I create my data set. And the fact that I create them, they're unique. You can't find the solution there. Because, the, 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 you see, the target data is always different. Even maybe you look at uh, maybe the data types. Okay, the shape of your data, the columns and what. So you find it's quite more different. Uh, even because the chat GPT will not be able to read that data set. It doesn't know where the data set is. For, okay? But you could just go there to ask questions on how best can I analyze a data in a CSV uh, format or JSON or an XML format file. Then it will show you but the steps, what you can Jeff, do. Yes. I have a question. Mm. So I have a Kago, a Kago account, right? Mm. So if I upload the data set there, won't you read it from there? When you upload it there, it won't read. Sure. Go try, yes. I'll try it. Chat, chat with GPT. Chat GPT4. Chat GPT. Remember, Chat GPT4 has a chance search online to tell you one moment as I search the net. Okay. For chat GPT3, you, you try, I'll try that. Try and upload the yeah. data set there and, and uh, try it and out. Try it out and see. Uh, and and see. Necessary operations in the yeah, I try to, you try to do it, right. I'll be like this, this site, this, this website, then clean it for me and I see what to do. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah you try it out and probably I'll get your feedback on that. But you see, yeah. it, all this happens because now you're understanding it much better. Yeah. And you gain the confidence how some of these AI driven tools. I think are. at the end of the day, it's how best can we maneuver the, the, round, the world. Sorry. Mm. How best can we get our tasks completed with a lot of accuracy? Because mm. as she had talked about, the Ruto president, Mr. the president of Kenya, trying to mm. fight the GPT. You is it a good take or a bad take? Mm -hmm. I, I, I think those people are living in their old eras, the old age eras. You see, Chat GPT has come to stay. If you don't embrace it, you'd be left behind mm. because you see, we are living in a continent in the world. So, if you do not, you see, one thing with innovation and technology, you you guys, we are all in the tech industry. Mm. If you do not embrace technology, just know you're going to be left behind, and once you're left behind. The the, the, the the digital the gap between the people who uses a technology and those who do not use technology will be wide. That means even when you go and you want to communicate to them, you'd find that their conversation is not well it's not always interesting. Mm. Yeah? Mm. You find like you're dealing with uh, a, a baby class mm. kind of a mindset. Yeah, That's yeah. why even these days it is very difficult for a man who uses more of conver conversational uh, AI tools or chatbots to get probably an educated woman to stay with. It is practically <laughs> impossible to me. Is it true? Uh, I think, you know, like, I think people used to suffer from getting lines for ladies, mm. but now I think with ChatGPT, even I think Snapchat, I've never used Snapchat, but I think Snapchat has that tool for chatting with the bot. A yes, yes, thing. Yes, yes. So I think guys of late, even the memers, at the end of the day, why I think it's so beneficial that if 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 I can generate the good lines, pick up lines, mm -hmm. you can generate all this are from chat GPT. But then the updated ladies who know chat GPT. But I will know that it's chat GPT Zara, Now how would you know? Now let, no, let, 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 let me how she throw back this question to Zara. <laughs> there are so many acronyms that are being used. In this modern era, yeah. OMG, LMO, you get it. So there are these words that always someone can type to you. You know, I can talk to you in those acronyms, but if you're not updated, you would totally say that. What the heck is this person yeah, doing? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So Zara, what what do you think in a situation 
We all use what? Okay. Billions of people use what? WhatsApp. I don't, I don't know the exact, but let me use billions of people use WhatsApp. Mm. But now, I'm chatting to you. This is a live chat. I'm mm. chatting to you on WhatsApp. You're replying me. And I'm using this acronym, acronym LMO, uh, OMG. So, yeah. and, and, and no, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, now you tell me, compare the aspect, mm. because Ruto is trying to ban the use of this. Probably that is his thinking. Um, I I still don't have data, but or I, I don't have evidence. I, I don't that. know whether that is true. No, is it true? I know he was wasn't good with it at the start. I don't know if he changed his mind, but I watched the clip myself of him disregarding mm. Chachi mm. That's it. So, so this is a be... disclaimer. I don't have evidence for. I, I I'm just hearing that they, they, they talked about Ruto trying to avoid charging mm -hmm. in school. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if you if you if you have a link. To any source that we can relate to as our evidence, probably to help to guide this discussion. But for now, we shall just allay it's an alleged kind of a word because mm. we also don't want you to come and comment negatively about in, in, in our comment section what we are discussing. But what I feel uh, we are talking about is it's very healthy. It's a healthy talk. Mm. So I think most of you are picking. You probably you would also keep up with our pace in the in the field of tech talk here. Yeah, so let's get back to Sarah. So let just tell me in you as a human being, as a as a lady who has gone to the university, mm. eh, what is your take on people who have not gone to school mm. and they are using the same platform? Because uh WhatsApp is for everyone. Yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. As long as you have a smartphone. Mm. And then you how do you find dating? How do you find dating a man in this aspect? Talking to a guy and the guy is totally green about some of this acronym. That's a red flag. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's a red flag because I okay. wouldn't deal with someone who mm. who are far better in uh, information. Mm. We call it being lead. Mm. Okay, being up to date. Mm. I feel like you're so local. Mm. You don't know what I'm really talking about. Okay. I I, I use a slang or an acronym like you say. Mm. He's again, out. He's like, what, what, are you, what are you saying? Can you imagine? <laughs> That's a pure, like a red flag in the first place. Yeah, you see, most of the time, I've tried with the, uh, you know, like you go out, meet friends, then start chatting to them. And each and every time you type, say, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, it's like. Every time you pay, you're supposed think, to answer yourself. I think, I think, so I think that's where most of us go wrong about mm. this. I think even parents, old people, mm. one thing I think they should focus on is getting exposure for their kids. Mm. I know these things come along with consequences, mm. or, but things like exposure to weird websites, mm. maybe pornography, yeah. maybe the kids. But however, I feel if your kids have been nurtured in the right way, they mm. can always have this of distinct of choosing between what's good and right. Mm. So, but because if you leave your kid behind, you're preventing him from accessing pornography mm. and he misses out on the trends in the world. Mm. I think he won't enjoy his youth. Don't your you kid. In fact, every kid should have a phone. Yeah. Now, I think I'm going to ask this question. We all have villages. <clears throat> okay. Mm. Let's let's first discuss about some of these demerits or these technologies. We all go for Christmas and we reach the village, everyone is on their phone. What's your take on that? As technology captured us into a prison where we cannot leave our gadgets Without a phone. and then talk to a real Every, human being. I know, right? Yeah. Yes. But, okay. So what's your say? My honest take on that mm. is it's just character, just people. Because me, honestly, she has a phone, I have a phone, but mm. she can tell. I can spend all day without touching my phone. You're different. But people are there. You can spend, like, even when you're in speeches, people are giving speeches, mm. you find majority on their own things, mm. websites. Even when you're in a room, yesterday yeah. actually brought a real topic. Yesterday I was in my room mm. with my roommate. Mm. Then I was smiling on my phone. Then she was like, Why are you smiling? Mm. She's also on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, And I'm like, mm. I'm just smiling because something made me smile. Here, like technology has wasted all of us. We are here, we are together, we mm. are friends. But you can spend the whole day on your phone without talking to me. 
So mm -hmm. that implies and in the same room. In the same room. Okay. That is a consequence. <laughs> even at home. Mm -hmm. You can like some some of us, even if you give me a phone, you give me data, I can spend my whole day in the room without like even if I don't talk to anyone. So I feel like it's a negative consequence of technology. People are not but, are no longer social. Like they are social in uh, online virtually, mm -hmm. but when you, you tell know. them the introverts are mm -hmm. being I think they're that finding they're it as <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But okay, to me still I don't find that as so much negative. Mm. If I don't want to talk to you, man, how should I talk to you? I'll talk to you when I want you. But then it's also not good. So so it's not good. It will not uh, bring that closer, closer relationship between you. Well, you know, physical. I think physical we have, we have to accept this. I think our grandpas, when they're growing up, they used to have their family gatherings, mm -hmm. their talk fire talks around the fire. Mm -hmm. All that has gone, right? Mm -hmm. So let's embrace what we have. Let's just try to have the moral aspect of us, where maybe if somebody wants to talk to you, to talk to them, give them time. If you are at an event, those are just ethics that we have to learn. If I've gone to church, let me maybe switch off my phone or leave it back at home. If and I know I'm so addicted to my phone, yes, yes. I leave it back home, I go to church. But uh, if, if you're in church and uh, you're in church, 50% uh, of the people are on their phone. And 50% are others are concentrating. Yeah, that time was, what do you, what do you that's time that time in church I was sitting with some lady and she was she spent the entire mass writing whatever they were preaching in phone. I don't know. I don't think it was right, but her, she liked it. She every time when they are preaching, she's writing. Yes. But I feel like the, it, makes, it looks weird because if a if a message pops up, you have to see. A notification comes, you have to see. So I think the, these are just ethics that we just have to develop by ourselves. And those who can't, still you can't condemn them because they you think they're doing what's right for them. Now, I watch a video. I'm going to drop the video somewhere. Uh, a parent removed a tablet from uh I don't know let's I don't know the exact age but I think between five to okay between four to five years. She removed the tab because the kid was addicted to the tab, she can't eat and she decided to confiscate the tablet. The kid just packed all her belonging in a small suitcase and walked away from the home. <laughs> and the parents were there and said, Okay, <laughs> bye <laughs> So the kid decided to walk moved along the road she wanted to go but she has no idea where, where she can going. go <laughs> but because she's she has developed that maturity from learning so much from the internet that if my parents confiscate my item i can leave home because that's probably what she has been learning yes. now the context of how these parents approach it and said okay i'm leaving the parents said bye and open the door the, the kids decided to walk she moved like almost 100 meters but she's realized but where am i going then when she looked left right she realized that she could not go anywhere she came back she came back home then <laughs> then when she came back home the parents said that the reason why i removed the phone is because this is going to be your captivity for the rest of your life we stay with you in the same room, but you stay in your door, in your own, because these kids have yes. their own room. And how will you They know? stay in their own room for even two or three days without even coming out. Because they come, grab what they want, take to their room. You don't know what time they pick uh, stuff from the fridges, but you will never see them so, coming back. I've, let me have a question for you guys, mm. both of you. Mm. At what time you sat in the Facebook? Uh, that was, uh, 12 years. Yeah. 12 years. And you, Mr. Jeff? Like ah uh, no, I think I joined Facebook in two zero zero nine. Two zero zero nine. Let's yeah. look at the time when we were joining Facebook. What was your experience? I'm sure you wouldn't spend that day with Actually, it was it was two zero eight. Two zero eight. Yeah, because my first contact with technology was in two thousand four. My dad bought for me a desktop computer and put it in my boy's folder. So even before joining the university, I knew that all my life is going to be centered about tech. And I've impacted over one, over two million. I've actually impacted to over two or three million people in, in, in Africa and the world in the field of uh, technology. Yeah. In so, terms of problem solving and and other aspects. So my interaction with Facebook. I'm giving you this background so that you understand uh, my how probably um so much into tech. Into tech. 
than any other field. Mm. That was now, 2008. That was 2008. This was 2012. She was so, in 2012. Yeah, I think mine was 2009. Yeah. But, but the, you were a kid. I was a kid. Yeah. But you see, during those times, mm. you would make sure. One, you'd open an account not using your own age because you aren't old enough. Yeah, yeah. You get someone yeah. open for you. For you. you make sure you... At that time, I was using through Facebook. Mm. Oh, Every time oh, oh. you... You reminded me remember about you, you had no data. You had no data. But you had to do it legal. Go on. I'd make sure every day I would open my Facebook account. But today, I blocked my Facebook account. I deactivated it. I think... I think I'm also among people who have deactivated. So I, you I, see, also, yeah, mm-hmm. you see, I think sometimes solving a solution... Okay, why, why I don't like about Facebook is that uh, if you want to be private, Facebook is more of an AI driven tool. It suggests you contact to almost everyone. You find the people, people around, around you. you. Yeah, that's, that's the people something you may know. Actually, uh, what I've seen, mm-hmm. the people you may know, all the people around you in your re- in your region, mm-hmm. the other people they will bring. Yeah, when yeah. you see I'm but, from Kampala, mm-hmm. they'll bring Kawempe, they'll bring all the people from Kawempe. My main concept mm-hmm. here was mm-hmm. you see, the excitement you had for Facebook played the punished. Mm-hmm. Okay, Instagram. No, I'm sorry, Instagram, but I don't use it as I used to do it. Mm-hmm. The way I used to go there looking for followers. Even Twitter, but I'll twist from I don't want followers. I just want to learn what I want. It's, a, it's the things that you keep. If you if you're a person, maybe you are an influencer, mm-hmm. now you seek for the followers. So about defining your mm-hmm. yourself. So I think even the kids themselves, if you try to prompt them, limit them from accessing such gadgets, mm-hmm. they keep getting that excitement. They just can't wait to have it. Have it yes, but yes. in case they have it early, trust me at one point. But be, even it's not again can it's not so that the importance. The excitement goes yeah. and becomes a no more gadget to them. Yeah. Then uh on the issue of uh you discuss about Facebook, the social media apps. I think we find it because for us in the tech world we tend to understand the, the pros and cons of these social uh, media apps yeah. a lot. Uh but uh even I was very shy to even be on camera, personally. Mm. Almost everything is within my cycle, private, private. I used to do a lot of But when I realized that uh, where I'm running away, people are making billions of money from me, I said, wait a minute. The people who are making money from me don't understand this technology. I do understand it much better than them, but I'm not using it to make money. They're there chilling, taking limitless trips across African countries. But I'm struggling to make 15 trips in a year in a different country. Then I said, wait a minute. Why don't I use this platform, you people who are watching me, like, share, and then subscribe. So that I also start now <laughs> embracing the travels. But that, that's the content. You see, when you understand the technology, you feel about That's why now we control what you see. And then you, you don't know what happens behind the scene, the uncut versions of what happens here, because we only control what you should see. But what I have realized about this social media, they are very good in the aspect that if you want to leverage onto your finances, you can use them. Mm. Even Makere University would not wish to be on any social media platform. Makere opened a YouTube channel now. They are even encouraging people to go for uh, professional, you know, inaugural lectures for for this talk, so that uh, most of these lecturers can get promotions that comes along with. You get it. So that is one of the aspects. Because if you really know what you're doing, come to the YouTube. You're speaking to the old world. You're not deceiving people. That's why when you pick up a topic to discuss here, we we feel that you more. We, we know the topic and we are discussing it. That's why we are staying relevant to our, to our what we know. We're discussing what we have studied, we're discussing what we have, what, what's our interest. Yeah. So that's why we want you to use technology, understand it, learn it, and then better of yourself to make money. But personally, I ran away from Facebook because of that kind of suggestion. Find you have very many following. And the bad thing, have you ever, I don't know you people, have you ever held your phone and go to social media and you find all messages people are seeking for help? Because of, you know, 
the, the image, I, it's quite worse with Instagram. What they show on the internet, you may think that's the life they are living. Yes, that's very right. <laughs> Remember, they yeah, were, even TikTok, the, but when a person is shooting, talk about it, <laughs> when a person is shooting a video, of mm. course, even if I live in a very ugly home, I'll look for a very good environment. I'll look for the best attire. I'll mm. look for the best everything. When I go out, I go for like expensive to expensive places. I'll only show you expensive life. Mm. You start admiring the person. They start following you up. They think you are cool kid. They have that trend of cool kid, bland mm. kid. Bland kid. But <laughs> in actual sense, when you find that person, trust me, it's a very, he's a very different person from the one you, so, you see on social media. There is uh, some girl, I have an experience. She's called Mama Kampala. Mama Kampala is in Makere University. <laughs> She's trending on Twitter. She's, I used to say, who is this girl? I was passing by Kuruma Hall. I saw Mama Kampala. I was like, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she didn't look so, so different, mm. but I was surprised. Mm. So uh, I think at times the, uh, this technology or internet is showing us different people from who they are. Yeah. It, it could also be a con, like uh, a problem, but it can also be good. Since before, we love to show good what people want to see and uh, get followers. Of course, I will always follow you to see what's up, how we, you know, I've gone, I've gone to Katesi, I've gone here, you know those. So I will always follow you because of that. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's a con and it's also a, dif- a disadvantage, or rather a, a pro, a, an advantage. Mm. So what, what's your advice? Well, of course, I will not uh, remove what is already uh, in. People have already taken that. Even me, when I'm shooting a video, I'll look for a nice place or something that will attract the people. So I feel like it's not a bad thing. They should take it on. And uh, I would also want to ask, what the movie industry is one of the biggest industries in the world. People, Some people cannot, I know, Elisha, you cannot spend a whole week without going to Netflix or watching any of this series. So what do you think? How do you see technology in the movie industry? What is the key benefit of technology? AI, AI actually, in the movie mm. industry. 